<clears throat> welcome to all, and especially welcome to our incoming medical students to Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. We are thrilled to have you here today with your family and friends to celebrate your white coat ceremony. And I'll let you all sit down. Thank you. I first want to acknowledge that here we are in Severance Hall and appreciate the fine um, quintet that we've just had uh, celebrate with us. Uh, Severance Hall is the home of the Cleveland Orchestra, the best band in the land and perhaps in the world, and we're delighted to be here. We gather here to celebrate the beginning of a new chapter for our newest uh, medical students enrolled in our three esteemed uh, medical degree training programs. We think this is a big deal and I hope you do as well. The university program, the college program of the Cleveland Clinic Learner uh, College of Medicine and the MD-PhD program, one of the longest standing um, in the country, all within our School of Medicine. It's a momentous occasion to begin medical education. All of us on stage have been through the experience you're about to undertake. So to our students, friends, families, and perhaps even pets, uh, this is your uh, white coat ceremony. Today, each of our first year students is about to receive their first official white coat, a symbol of the profession which serves as a formal entrance into the School of Medicine. And this is a wonderful venue on the campus of Case Western Reserve uh, to do that. So I uh, ask our incoming medical students uh, uh, class to stand up one more time. Look around to your fellow classmates uh, and take a moment to reflect on this tremendous uh, dedication and effort and of hard work that it took you to get here. Each of you on an individual path and you'll share your paths going forward. Um, but also look around uh, to those around uh, uh, in the audience, your families, friends, uh, guardians, uh, family members who've helped you get to this point. So a round of applause to all. As a graduate, as a parent, rather, of uh, one uh, son and uh, now a daughter-in-law um, who were graduates of the 2000 class of uh, 2012, I know that there are few um, feelings that compare to when a student actually makes it to this point and then ultimately uh, graduates. So both as you start um, as the student and as family, friends, and, and uh, colleagues, partners um, look upon this day, we uh, are here to help you through it, and we're looking forward to your entire um, mission and journey as you uh, take on this important endeavor. You can sit down. Thank you. It's remarkable for me, as the Dean of the School of Medicine, uh, to mark your entry into the noble society of healers perhaps one of the longest professions of humankind. From this day forward, um, I should warn you that you will perceive and look at the world a little differently uh, through a different lens uh, as you're trained in the uh, job and career of healing. And society in turn will look at you differently as, as well with remarkably elevated expectations of the principles and ethics that you will uphold. Each of us on this stage uh, can attest that being a physician um, prepares you to take on the world, and it's an incredible opportunity um, both to learn, and to gain a knowledge, and to, part to transmit that knowledge to others, and also a responsibility to do so. We will train you uh, to care for an increasingly diverse and conflicted world. In your pr profession, you will be asked to help those from every corner of the planet, and I suspect a couple of you will actually go beyond the planet in the next 50 years as we explore uh, Mars, Moon, and the like, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, some of you took on that 
with the plum. An appreciation of the highest quality of uh, medical care across this diversity of culture, thought, ethnic background, mores, and values is a collective calling. We really can't leave anyone behind in the healing process. And so we embark on that mission together. We, like you, um, uh, view ourselves as pioneers in the field of medicine, realizing that the status quo is unacceptable. We've made a lot of advances, and we have so far to go. We strive for a healthier planet and a healthier population. Uh, and you'll see in our Pathways programs, for instance, how we take on the curriculum and modulate it so that you can become experts in certain classes and fields uh, that you think are critically important. Somehow, we all work, need to work together to help understand and solve societal ills, human diseases, uh, the difficulties of communicating uh, medical facts and information to improve the lives of uh, everyone on this planet. The experiences of the last few years have taught us how important the valuable lessons are of transmitting, not just gaining the knowledge of, of scientific discovery, but how to implement those discoveries across the landscape, how to help with the logistics of equity in, in medical care. And we've got some new things to worry about now, uh, the medical consequences of climate change, social disparities and the devastations that they bring, uh, to remove barriers caused by stress, violence, addiction, social injustice, environmental exposure, systemic racism, just to name a few. They're part of what we do in medicine. And uh, the recent political environment has made that even more complex for us. And soon we'll hear from Dr. Stephanie Thiel, who is passionate about teaching and practicing in reproductive rights. So let's look at this amazing class. You come from an incredibly broad range of backgrounds, expertise, and accomplishments. Some of you view yourself as scientists, some as social scientists, some as lawyers. Um, and if you look at this broad range, uh, this is what makes the class unique and so special. So we will build on your diversity as a powerhouse of learning. Now, many of you, um, uh, are probably the first in your family in medicine, as I was. Um, but it is the case that uh, my wife and I met on the first day of our medical school class, as did my son and daughter-in-law. Uh, and I have another daughter who is an adolescent psychiatrist. So our family business is medicine, and I hope yours will be as well. And I asked them for a little bit of advice. Ruth, the adolescent psychiatrist, commented, it's important to put aside your assumptions, superficial understandings, and instead consider every patient and every new, quest, new research question as a new idea. Uh, my son James, like me an oncologist, said, physicians, whether they're clinicians or in research work, need to be humble to come at each challenge with curiosity and openness for new ideas. So that's my personal uh, comments for the morning. And now I'd like to tell you about who's on stage, because you're going to be working very closely with them uh, for the rest of your uh, career time with us. So as I call each person, I'm going to ask them to stand and then remain standing. Uh, Leah Loggio, uh, Vice Dean for Medical Education. Bud Isaacson, Executive Dean um, at the Le Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine of Case Western Reserve University. And joining us today, as I mentioned, our keynote speaker, Dr. Stephanie Thiel, Professor and Chair of Obstetrics and Gynecology of University Hospitals and Case Western Reserve. Alex Wang, whom some of you met this morning, Director of the uh, Medical uh, Scientist Training Program, and Professor of Pediatrics and of Pathology. And our society deans, uh, Dr. Steve Riccanati, Associate Dean of Student Affairs for the Warren Society, Dr. Marjorie Greenfield, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs uh, of the Geiger Society, Todd Otteson, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs of the Blackwell McKinley Society, Dr. Jill Azok, Assistant Dean for, for Human Affairs for the Satcher Society, Dr. Angelique uh, Ritas McCoy, uh, Assistant Dean uh, of the Society of the uh, for Student Affairs for the Robbins Society, and Jason Lambrizi. Assistant Dean for Student Affairs of the Gerberding Society, and I should point out 
uh, Dr. Christine Warren, Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs for the Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine. Others joining us this morning are Dr. Beth Sursig, a Clinical Assistant Professor and President of our very esteemed, and you will join, uh, Alumni Medical Board. Dr. Lena Mehta, uh, whom you all know, uh, Associate Dean for Admissions. Uh, Dr. Neil Mehta, Associate Dean for Curriculum Affairs for the Cleveland Clinic Lunar College uh, program. Dr. Wilson Del Foss, um, Associate Dean for Curriculum and Professor in the Department of Pharmacology. Don, uh, Dr. Monica Ipes Rios, Assistant Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, for our medical students. Dr. Michael Constant, Professor of Pediatrics, who recently served as the Vice Dean for Translational Science. So I'd like to give a round of applause to our key educators. And luckily, I didn't leave anybody out, but you can now sit down. Thank you. <laughs> There are also um, a number of our faculty joining our st on stage today who took uh, time away from their weekend to join us for this incredibly auspicious occasion. So now to offer introductory remarks, I'd like to ask um, Bud Isaacson, Executive Dean uh, for the Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine program uh, to join us for a few remarks. Thank you. Thanks, Wow, what a day. Congratulations. Uh, this doesn't get old for us up here. Uh, we relish this. It's one of our favorite celebrations and so happy and privileged to be with you today. So like Stan said, I want you to just look around. I want you to look to your right, look to your left, okay? Some have heard this story, but it doesn't get old to me. So I'm going to tell you the story of Andy and Andrea, okay? Andrea. Harnick and Andy Harding. They were seated here 13 years ago, right there. They met for the first time. Guess what happened? <laughs> Three years later, they were married. Now they are raising a family and successful professionals in St. Louis. So you never know what's going to happen here at the White Coat Ceremony. <laughs> My remarks are really that the white coat has a lot of symbolism, right? We all have our coats on, and it's important. It's a symbol to our patients, to society, but it's so important what's inside the white coat. And I just have four, four words I want you to think about that are not on your white coat, but should be inside your white coat with you. The first is trust. Our patients place incredible trust in us to invite us into the most intimate parts of their lives, and it's incredible. And you will experience that with your white coats relatively soon. So that's really incredibly important. With that comes incredible responsibility. Responsibility to put our own patients' interests first, and also society interests first. In fact, uh, just today in the New York Times, there's an article about some problems in medicine, and one of our graduates, Caitlin Hicks, is featured in that article because in the article there's talk about patients having procedures done that maybe weren't in their best interest. And I'm very proud that Caitlin, one of our CWRU School of Medicine graduates, has actually done research to expose that. Third thing is humility. Okay, humility means knowing when you need help, knowing that you do not know everything, but also knowing how to take care of yourself. It's critically important. You can only be your best for your patients, for your colleagues, when you take care of yourself. So remember that. And finally, curiosity. And curiosity from solving patient problems and solving scientific problems, but also curiosity about the people that you're working with and the people you care for. So before you get involved with the business aspect in terms of uh, taking care of the medical issues or the scientific issues, find out who the people are that you're working with. Just a simple, hello, tell me about yourself, can go so long, to, especially for patients, to lower the anxiety 
and let them know that you care about them first and foremost as a person and not just a collection of medical problems. So I welcome you to the profession. I'm delighted to be here with you. And again, congratulations. Uh, thank you, Bud. Uh, I'd now like to bring to the podium Dr. Leo Logio, our Vice Dean for Medical Education, for her remarks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You're getting the hang of it. Um, so uh, I'm really excited. You've already heard some of my remarks during the orientation week this past week. And I just want to say it's here. The first day is tomorrow. And the journey um, starts with one single step. And you're making those steps. I'll talk about a little bit of a different kind of love affair than everyone else has been talking about, about meeting their spouse at medical school. But for me, medicine is a calling, and it really is a love affair. You just fall in love with what you're doing and the special, special intimate space that you spend with your patients and with your patients as populations and with society. Um, and I really just wish you the best of the journey. As I told you on, when, on Tuesday, I think the most important thing for you to do is breathe and really just immerse yourself in every single experience along the way. Your heart will guide you. It takes smarts and heart and courage, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, but... Uh, with, all, with those tools, you'll, you'll do fine. It's now my honor and privilege to actually introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Stephanie Teal. Dr. Teal serves as the department chair for obstetrics and gynecology at University Hospital's health system. She is the Arthur H. Bill Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Reproductive Biology in Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. In her leadership role, she's a powerhouse. She's developed a robust team of outstanding physicians, midwives, nurses, and scientists, all dedicated to safe motherhood and care for women across their lifespan. Dr. Teal went to Stanford University before earning her medical degree at the University of California in San Francisco, which was followed by training in obstetrics and gynecology at the University of California in San Diego. She subsequently completed her fellowship in complex family planning with a master's of public health and epidemiology at Columbia University. I told you she was a powerhouse. Prior to joining Case Western School of Medicine, she was a tenured professor of obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, and clinical sciences at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, where she served as division chief and fellowship director of complex family planning and principal investigator of the contraceptive clinical trials network. She has led many phase two and phase three studies of novel contraceptive delivery technologies, contraceptive steroids, and selective progesterone receptor modulators. As the medical consultant for family planning in the Colorado Department of Public Health, she was a key collaborator in the Colorado Family Planning Initiative, which reduced unintended pregnancies and abortion statewide by 40% over five years. She is an inspirational leader who cares greatly about the patients and her colleagues and the learners that she serves. I'm delighted to call her a friend, and please join me in welcoming Dr. Teal to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Loggio, for that kind introduction. And thank you, Dean Gerson, for inviting me to address the class today. It is a true honor. Welcome, Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, class of 2027. And especially welcome to the families, partners, and friends for trusting us and giving us um, your most valued possessions, your, um, your beloved students. Today, 
In just a few minutes, you will receive your white coat, denoting your entrance into a fraternity that is literally thousands, thousands of years old, a guild of men and women who dedicate our lives to the study of disease and of health and the transitions between these states. This coat does a lot of things. It keeps stuff from splashing on your clothes. <laughs> Those of you who go into OBGYN will really appreciate that. It has lots of pockets. It's very good for pens, notes, three by five cards, reflex hammers, pen lights, a cell phone. It adds a little warmth at night in the hospital, and it also speaks. And it has a lot to say, especially about power and privilege. The power of the white coat at its best is the power to comfort and the power to restore. It affords those who wear it the privilege to enter the lives of others in ways that few others can, and in ways that enrich and change us as we attempt to heal our patients. As a medical student, as you're about to become, I wore my white coat in the hospital. And in November 1991, I was wearing it on the inpatient psychiatry consult service. The medicine team had asked us to see a 36-year-old man with AIDS and mental status changes. They wanted to know whether these were due to his uh, AIDS-related brain tumor or to a psychiatric cause. And my resident said to me, this is all you. I knocked and I went in, and he was super rude to me. I was a complete irritant to him. But like a good medical student, I persisted, and he knew from my coat that at some level he was supposed to let me. And when I took his history, I found that his family had disowned him years ago, and his friends had either died already or did not want to come into this particular hospital, San Francisco General Hospital, where so many had died and where they were probably going to die too. I rounded on him every day for weeks. He grumbled when he saw my white coat on the threshold of his room, but he didn't order me out, and he got worse. And one day I walked into his room after seeing my new admissions, and his jaw was open, his head was flopped back, and his eyes were half closed. I started talking to him, and he didn't respond. After a bit, I leaned forward and said, William, are you there? Do you know who this is? And without moving anything but his tongue and throat, he garbled out my name for the first and last time. I was the last person whose name he said. And I was the last person to speak his name to him. He's been dead now for 32 years, and he is still part of me. That is the sacred compact we make with this white coat when we choose to enter this field. That is the privilege that we have. But sometimes the power of the white coat gets in the way. White coat hypertension is a condition we're just seeing a physician causes the patient to have a fight or flight response and shoot up their blood pressure. The white coat and what it represents gives you the power to interrupt. And doctors are well documented to be some of the worst interrupters out there. Because the white coat sometimes makes us and our patients feel like we're in charge. We're in the driver's seat. And the coat lets us say, just about anything to patients. I did my OBGYN residency in San Diego, as Dr. Logio told you, at one of the hospitals closest to the US-Mexico border. 
Every day and night, labor and delivery was inundated with patients with no records, no prenatal care, unknown gestational age, and it was completely overwhelming. One night, a 19-year-old Mexican woman came in complaining of contractions, and she had nothing you know, known about her, and I had just had it. She looked full term, but I needed to do an ultrasound, and as I got everything set up, I lectured her in my pretty crummy Spanish on the importance of prenatal care, the irresponsibility of not going to the doctor even once, and my hope that she would do better as a mother once the baby was born. I knew I made her feel terrible, but she nodded and said, yes, doctor, because I had all the power. Then I put the ultrasound transducer on her abdomen, and there was no heartbeat. Her baby was dead. And in the moment between us, when I knew, and she still didn't, I realized that when this patient came to me for help, I had just harmed her worse than I ever could have with a scalpel. And there was nothing I could say that would fix it. Power and privilege cut both ways. The white coat is a symbol of your chosen profession, but it's also a symbol of your chosen community of scholarship. Before medical training was formalized and could be completed in a year or so of apprenticeship, doctors wore street clothes, even in the operating room. The white coat was brought over into patient care from its origin in the laboratory, as medicine became an applied science, not only an art. Wearing this white coat tells your patients that you are a scientist, a scholar, and a lifelong student. As times have changed, many physicians have stopped wearing our coats into patients' rooms. Studies show we don't wash them frequently enough and they carry bacteria. <laughs> but also, many physicians find them too formal and off-putting. Interestingly, Studies also show that patients prefer them. The intimacy that we are privileged to experience when patients tell us their fears and show us their wounds, sometimes within moments of meeting us, is given to the doctor, not to you as the person who you've always been, who you think of you know, when you're out with your friends and your family and posting on social media. As you head into the next four years, your curriculum in what professionalism means in the context of the power and privilege of medicine will be the thread that turns you into not just a scientist, but a doctor. I understand that you have spent this week working on your oath, considering the promises that speak deeply to you. Four or more years from now, you will stand together to take the Hippocratic Oath. So for the intervening years, I leave you with a quote attributed to Hippocrates. Life is short and the art long. And the right time and instant and treatment precarious and the crisis grievous. It is necessary for the physician not only to provide the needed treatment, but to provide for the patient himself and for those beside him. Your class, your generation of physicians, and you can choose how to use the power that you will earn through your dedication to the healing arts symbolized by the white coat you are about to receive. I challenge you to use that collective power to reject what does not serve your patients or community and make the science and art of medicine fulfill you to help heal the patients themselves, those around them, and those around us all. Thank you.
Uh, Dr. Thiel, thank you. Those were uh, profound and thoughtful remarks, and I hope that they carry with us through the rest of the day, and I'm confident that our medical students are going to spend a lot of time wearing their white coats. Perhaps um, they'll take the record for white coat percentage wearage over the next few years, so keep that in mind, folks. So without further ado, I think it's time to pass out some white coats. So to do so, uh, we've rehearsed this, so we're all ready. Um, I'm going to have uh, Dr. Lena Mehta come uh, to begin the process. Um, she knows these students better than anybody today, but the rest of us will learn quickly. So Lena, it's all yours. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Students, please come forward as your name is called. Holly Adams. Max On. Thwisha Ananthasagar. Clarence Armstrong III. Keith Arnold. Olivia Asimakis. Ashvin Babu. <laughs> Juma Becker. <laughs> Nikita Balaji. <laughs> Lisa Beganova. <laughs> Zoe Bellardo. Nick Belt. <laughs> Brian Benyamini. <laughs> Mitch Berg. <laughs> Alexis Burnett. <laughs> Arushi Bon. Seth Burrell. <laughs> Michael Blackledge. <laughs> Gustavo Borjas. <laughs> Caitlin Bowers. <laughs> Gray Braybrooks. Adi Brightman. Aaron Brooks. Gabby Brown. Joshua Bruce. Samantha Burke. Madison Burns. <laughs> Lynette Boutron. <laughs> Alexander Cabalong. <laughs> Alicia Castellanos. Jessica Cawley. <laughs> Sashwat Chakraborty. <laughs> Vishu Chandrasekhar. <laughs> Vishu 
Vanessa Chen. Jesse Cheng. Chaitanya Jenneretti. Juliana Condaleo. Annie Cotton. Lauren Cumberbatch. Sarah D'Ambrazo. Caitlin Darling. Brian Dvorkin. Camille Diaz Garcia. Gianmarco Douglas. Jonathan Eversmith. Tara Foley. Scott Fong. James Gaston. Shani Gellis. Alyssa Goldberg. Abby Greer. Sinyu Sherry Gu. Nicole Guzman Viegas. Jared Haberman. Garrett Hafke. Ashley Haler. David Hahn. Wan He Hahn. Logan Harper. Sarah Heron. Nada Hantari. Andres Hernandez. Jessica Hinnis. Jane Jin Hong. Vincent Huang. Aaron Hubbard. Rimsha Husseini. Dara Ikejiani. Alexander Izda. Inesh Jain. Grace Jaramillo. Marcel Jean-Pierre. Su Wan Jong. Karen G. Kevin Jobson. Jordan Kalik.
Arjun Kalra. Mahip Kalra. Afra Kamal. Ruchika Kamajala. Fayez Kenj. Nathan Katragata. Rishi Katragata. Anish Katta. Austin Kenimer. Connor Koishal. Kairul Khan. Samya Khanda. Dana Kong. Rachel Kosick. Carl Koster. Sindhu Kasuru. Bennett Kukla. Lily Kwiatkowski. Austin Lee. Joyce Hyojin Lee. Michael Lee. Sophie Lee. Hannah Lamel. Jevin Litweiler. Alice Liu. Michael Liu. Evelyn Lomax. Sophie Liu. Akhil Mandavali. Brianna Matthew. Grace McDermott. Megan McHale. Lydia McLaughlin. Ronnie McLynn. Justin Mendoza. Claire Mobed. Shivangi Mota. Jacob Moore. Satya Morar. Isaac Mordohoyevich. Carrie Morgan. Maxim Munya Shakur. Daniel Nadim. Yeah. 
Raya Nalawi. Nupur Nayak. Timothy Nakla. Shivani Nalur. Shade Nicholas. Will Woke. Joseph O'Donnell. Liam O'Reilly. Miet Og. Ese Onose Amoyjuanfo. Argian Amorzakov. Oscar Ose. Riley O'Toole. Daniel Owen. Killian Pash. Ye Lin Pack. Bernard Pan. Kevin Park. Sajin Patel. Shivni Patel. Bailey Perzak. Abby Peterson. Patricio Pickling Echevarria. Zach Player. Patrick Patozak. Abby Pritchard. Joey Quick. Asia Ragnall. Samita Rai. Nilufar Raja. Shweta Ramachandran. Manisha Ramprasad. Timothy Ring. Kaylee Risher. McKenna Romanelli. Connor Roncalli. Matthew Rosenthal. Victoria Roosh. Paul Saberwall. Ajay Babu Sumeta. William Stanislaw. Beck Shore. Elizabeth Seitz. (laughs) 
Mithali Sharma. Isabella Shaw. Soon Young Shim. Robert Shu. Jesse Silfer. David Silva. Kalash Singh. Eli Smith. Jacob Smothers. Brian Song. Meha Srivastava. Salve Stensland. Victoria Stepanyets. Danny Strever. Hannah Sa. Mahmoud Summers. Jessica Saratko. Cami Tang. Felicia Tejawinata. Priyanka Tejwani. Ayush Takur. Jvatali Thate. Rhea Tilvi. Andrew Kachenko. Carmen Toth. Chase Turner. Malia Valder. Jesse Villafuerta. Manu Vora. Sophia Vishnye. Catherine Wall. Sabrina Walsh. George Wang. Erin Wyland. Richard Weitzel. Victoria Whitmore. Anne Wong. Kaylin Wong. Jerry Wu. Andrew Wiley. Vivian Shah. Crystal Chu. Sarah Yakub.
Kevin Yin. Hai Tung Yu. Kaylee Zeronius. David Zhang. Edward Zhang. Katie Zhang. Victoria Zhao. Amy Jo. Melody Joe. Patrick Chuang. Mia Zivkovic. Congratulations and welcome. So Dr. Mehta, thank you for allowing us to present the class uh, entering in 2023 for the School of Medicine. What an incredible bunch, and we had the celebratory events that we needed. Uh, we're not done yet because we have a little work to do. As we mentioned, uh, Dr. Riccanati led the group uh, this uh, past Friday in developing uh, their oath. And now we're going to read it to you, Dr. Riccanati. Thank you, Dean Gerson. To borrow some words from our esteemed speaker, if the white coat is about power and privilege, then the oath is aspirational and is about the struggle. And last Friday, our students did struggle. All 200 plus students worked together in small groups and medium-sized groups and then appointed an executive committee to pull together their oath. The recitation of this oath marks their formal entrance into the study of medicine. It gives me great pleasure to invite two of their classmates, Kyrul Khan and Gabrielle Brown, to come to the stage and lead the class in the recitation of the oath Will the entering class of 2023 please stand and pledge your oath? We, the entering class of 2023, humbly undertake the lifelong study of medicine and the pursuit of mastery. The sacred trust of our patients is built upon confidentiality and respect. We vow to create supportive environments, treat our patients with dignity, respect patient autonomy, and empower patients to make informed decisions. Empathy lies at the core of our profession. 
We recognize patients come to us at a time of great need. We will listen to our patients with open hearts, walk alongside them, and do no harm. We will hold ourselves and our peers accountable. We promise to foster a growth mindset, be receptive to critical feedback, learn from our mistakes, and be willing to ask for help. We will lead as physician advocates to empower patients and communities, advance health equity and social justice, and challenge the status quo. We are grateful to practice the art of healing. We pledge to innovate through research and advocacy for our patients. We vow to build our identities as physicians upon these principles. That was pretty incredible, and congratulations. You may be seated. Thank you. That was uh, well worth every moment that it took for you to consider, and we will hold you to it. That's our uh, enjoyment. So to our newest colleagues who are entering as the class of uh, beginning in 2023, we are delighted that you're here. Um, we will uh, reach out to you at every moment and a heartfelt welcome to every one of you into the medical profession. From this moment forward, uh, you are part of the Asim Society of Healers who Serve Humankind. As we've heard, the white coat means a lot and wear it well and carefully. Uh, bring with it uh, unwavering responsibility, trust, dedication, humility, as we've heard. May it serve also as a constant reminder of that incredible privilege um, and responsibility that you take uh, to care for whomever comes your way. So that concludes our program. We would like to be able to have uh, some celebration outside in the halls, uh, but we're going to ask if you could that uh, all of our guests remain seated so that we can uh, leave first not for refreshments, but we want to take a really good picture out in the, uh, in the steps. Um, so let us move out first, and then uh, you can all mingle uh, on the floors um, for a reception. Uh, so with the musical cue, we will uh, lead ourselves out, uh, followed by the students, for a, uh, a picture that we'll all enjoy seeing. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.